This is Lindsay Williams, and you're listening to the Fuck Drunkard off. United show. Bless your little cotton socks. See, the whole thing is what this is, isn't it? Uh, everybody, I'm sure this is. Uh, I'm, I'm sure people are tuning in very much for the wellness check. We'll be okay. We'll, we'll be all right. I'm know? not going to be. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it's only our second worst <laughs> loss in the in Premier League history. So that one still belongs to you. And you know what? It wasn't 9 nothing twice. Let's start this show. <laughs> Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Put you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Arsenal fans have another Sam. Right, AA, the fucking Gooner Graham. Smell of a lord. Look straight in short. Sam Graham, yeah. Sam Graham. Fucking United! Fucking United! Hello and welcome to the DU Football Show, a completely biased recap of the English Premier League is told by two common American schmucks. I am your host, Sam Houston. That's right, Mr. Graham. I pulled out the big boy and across the way from me, <laughs> thriving off of his daughter's pain, apparently. <laughs> yep. My co-host, Mr. Samuel Graham. How you doing, buddy? What I needed on Sunday if somebody else to hurt as bad as I did. <laughs> and on the ones and twos, we've got producer Mel. Um... I don't even need to ask. I know how she's fucking doing. Uh, I'm high host silver away, boys. Yeah, you know, it would be good if there's actually whiskey in the glass as you're holding it up, you know. Atta girl, there we go. We're recording the DU Public House just outside the nation's capital. You can check us out wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, streaming live every single Monday night. Should you want to chat with us, there is many ways that you can. Mr. Graham, tell the good people how they can get in touch. Nah, after the last 24 <laughs> hours, don't fucking talk to us you anymore. You can email us at <laughs> producermel at uh, gmail.com. Uh, I've been getting absolutely hosed. It's at DU Football Show on all the social medias at DU Football Show at gmail.com to get in touch by you. didn't bring to the game not just the basics of football, no. I believe the basics of life. Actually, I think that was your boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Uh, I would say, yeah. That's not me. We tried in the first they half. They did try. <laughs> We tried in the first day. Y'all didn't try at all. No, no, not one bit. No, no one bit. No. Did get a couple cynical yellows, so at least we're not like well, the boys. We'll look at you know? it when we get there. No. Sam yeah. myself both work in the wine and spirit industry and both have a deep, passionate love for all things distilled spirits. So is the red-blooded Americans we are. We about to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every single show. Mr. Graham, we are to number two. What are we drinking tonight, sir? All right, we have Highland Park's Cash Strength Batch Number 4. This one clocks in at a whopping 128.6 proof. Woo, Nelly! Or 64.3% by volume, <clears throat> if you can't do your own maths. Should run you about 100 bucks. That's exactly what we paid for it uh, mm -hmm. wholesale, I believe, um, because we fucking know people. Mm -hmm. uh, the panel gave this a 95. It is a single malt scotch. Uh, uh it says island it is it's island park on an oh yeah it is the yeah, orkney yeah, yeah. yeah all orkney. the way up north yeah, yeah, yeah. uh a giant of um oh, i'm sorry your blurb comes from johnny mccormick i apologize a giant of a whiskey with the highest proof ever on our top 20 list and it's surprising that it's coming from a scotch as well normally it would you would normally think it's a bourbon mm -hmm. almost always a bourbon back to the blurb mm -hmm. highland park cast strength is about more than just high octane thrills <laughs> like chelsea Mm -hmm. Unencum <laughs> <laughs> Unencumbered by an age statement, master master whiskey maker Gordon. 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 Oh, please, yes. This is. I hope this is his last name's Motion. <laughs> Gordon Motion. I love it. Was free to paint batch four with flavor in mind using a vivid palette of sherry seasoned European and American oak, bourbon, and refill casks. Then, in a twist, adding port casks for a daring new streak of flavor. In the distillery's 225th year, Motion's stellar accomplishment, that's what I called my third child, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, integrates expressive notes of pink grapefruit and exotic spices within a deep well of citrus dark chocolate and heathery peat smoke. She is big. 
Like it's it's massive flavor, and it it's it really drags you good. it drags you all over the place too. But it's really good. It's wild. There's this, big this heat. Whiskey there's is big, fucking wild. There's big heat on the back end. There oh, definitely yeah. is. I mean, it, it, it's a not for but the faint it, of heart. It doesn't stick. It didn't stick with me too terribly long. Mm-hmm. That kind of port. I told you I love those those kind of port and sherry cast finishes mm-hmm. because they kind of tone that down a bit. It actually kind of leveled out in me pretty well. Mm-hmm. This is good. It's really fucking good. Yeah, yeah. This was uh, the year of cash strength for uh, for Scottish whiskey, particularly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would assume they're following the trends that bourbon has set. Mm-hmm. That bourbon was doing a lot of cash strength stuff, and not necessarily a keeping up with the Joneses because Scotch was doing it first. But they're probably saying, "Hmm, people like high octane. Maybe we should be doing some high octane." People don't necessarily care about an age statement. A lot of Scottish whiskeys are starting to get away from age statements. Well, their you know? their biggest losses, I think, in Scotch, seeing as I sell a fair few of them, has been in the core line of everyday available products. Right. Are the biggest losses hands down, and I think that this this sort of trend towards single barrel sales to individual <clears throat> stores like I saw my first ever single barrel Scotch sale at all of you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, about a year ago when they the got that Glen or yep. whatever it was, yeah, which we have. Um, but it, it's one of those, like, I think it's, we need to reintroduce people to Scotch. And if this is what they're looking for, let's go ahead and do this. Um, you know, like you said, they, they've released them before. It's just, I've never really come across them. It may be something mm-hmm. more available in Scotland, uh, than it is here typically, but, um, over the last year or so, I've seen more and more of these pop up, and they are fucking delicious. Oh, God, yeah, they are. They're really good. And Highland Park is just a, a, a quality, quality company. Yeah. yeah, it's part of the uh, Edrington Group, so it who, it who does um, the McAllen and Glen Rothis and uh, Brugal Rum. Glen Throws, <laughs> isn't it? What's that? Is it Glen Throws? What's the name Yeah, Glen Throws. My, yeah. my apologies. And also, um, uh, they do uh, Grouse's their blend. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Wyoming whiskey as well is theirs, too. Uh, I was actually drinking some Highland Park today at the uh, Baltimore Bartenders Guild. Nice. Yeah, we were doing a little bit. How many guild meetings is that for you in the last two weeks? Uh, (laughs) One actual (laughs) meeting, but that was the other one was a staff trip, was a training. Oh, but yeah, it's uh, and uh, I would be going to the D.C. one next week, but they ended up doing it this week, which kind of sucked. I wanted to get to the D.C. one. I was going to be talking about a kind of what it is we do you know we're not just a credit card what what how it is we work with a brand and stuff like that and would have been a nice discussion to be around for and if y'all already questions. supported us you probably would have came to dinner last week <laughs> when i was trying to give you bottles and, and free <laughs> gift cards and all kinds of shit you know that's how it works yeah this is again this is bloody fucking delightful uh you can still find it it is it is out there um because let's also let's face it this isn't something that, unless you're really a scotch drinker or you collect this list, you're probably not necessarily clamoring or looking for, necessarily. Mm. It might be something's not even on your radar. Yeah. Mm. Big, smoky, a little, little bit of that iodine peat, but not a ton. Um, a lot of well, fucking they said, flavors. They said heathery smoke, yeah. which I tend to agree with. Yeah. yeah Heather, for those that don't know, Heather is a... Um, uh, would you call it a botanical? Probably that grows on the in the Scottish hillsides. Yep. Um, Mel, do you need a little bit more? Sure. For me, it's kind of reminiscent of lavender, but not as intense. Does that yeah, sound that's about a good call. right? Um, it's but it, this is fucking good. <clears throat> yeah, I'm yeah. in. I'm into this. Yeah. Uh, if you are into scottish whiskeys or mm. high proof whiskeys at all this is an absolute must fucking buy it is really goddamn good sorry russ yeah that, that's that's good always was, remember to drink responsibly. i was gonna say you can't be angry at russ they lost too so <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's bad. that was woo. there you there go it is. much better that was ugly. It was. Oh, and we're going to get into ugly. That's our guy. Uh, we open with the weekend. City winning and putting themselves at the top of the table. All Liverpool and Arsenal had to do was just hold serve. Not so fast. 
Manchester City 5, Luton 1, Palace 1, Liverpool 0, Aston Villa 2, Arsenal 0. Honestly, was not an easy first half for, for City at all. They had it, they were getting lots of shots, but they weren't putting much on target to start. No, but ultimately, at home against Luton, the question wasn't if, it was how many. And that eventually proved to be the case, yeah. honestly. Luton obviously got their consolation after the double substitution by Pep and, and the entirety of the City squad switching off at the exact same time for absolutely no reason and allowing Ross Barkley one of the easiest goals he'll ever score in his career. I do need to ask you one question. Okay. Is Hashigawa now the new uh, bout face? Could be. Coming the new own goal well, king. It, <laughs> it hit him right in the face uh, when it went in. Um, yeah, that was my next point. Was it? It really didn't take long for Hashikawa, uh, Hashioka's goal to Hashioka. To, there we go. To get worse. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just like whoop. No, nope, nope. uh, yeah. Second minute own goal um, from him. I think uh, it is a bold choice to dye the hair <coughs> mm-hmm. that color mm-hmm. um, when you're that bad. Yeah, you don't want to bring attention to yourself. Normally, players dye their hair to draw attention to themselves for a transfer. Yeah. Hey, look at me. I'm doing well. Yeah. But this is his second own goal in as many weeks. And I think only the third week or so, maybe fourth week with this hairstyle. Mm-hmm. Not a fan. Maybe go back to original color there. Just Could be. Yep. Ain't nobody need to know. That's for damn sure. No. <clears throat> no, no, no. And honestly, let's face it. You you had mentioned, you hinted at the uh, the lone bright spot with Barkley, but the second half was all city. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just complete domination uh, at that had, point. You had a couple of screamers. You had Kovacic and uh, Gvardiol, obviously. Mm-hmm. You had uh, the penalty uh, from, from Holland. And then an individual piece of absolute brilliance from Doku. Just turning defenders inside out, Hashioka being one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just what a mazy, fantastic run. Good feet, good balance, good strength. At one point he was pushed, kept his feet. Uh, and then just the finish to finish to to boot it was it was absolutely brilliant from uh from doku um obviously those were not in order of when they happened but um but yeah it was i mean what a what a performance it it, it fills you with dread yet, yeah. a, yet again doesn't it's, it city find themselves on top of the table and you're like oh no not fucking again right well that's what makes me more mad at villa and i'll tell you why when we get there mm-hmm. okay we'll get there in a moment now for uh Luton, the, the bad part there is you don't gain any ground. Like, you're running out of matches. Yeah. Yes, you've got a couple at home that should be winnable. You've got Brentford at home. you got Everton at home. You think you can win both of those, or at least you have to win both of those if you're going to survive. But you are running out of opportunities now, huh, Luton? Yeah, I mean, that's true. <laughs> However, I would say they did gain a little ground, um, if I can... Oh, on goal differential? Yeah, yeah, but they're still behind us, so. I know. For now, yeah. <laughs> they still have to play you. For- Forrest isn't, but that's part of where we're going to get to that when we get to uh, Luton's Osa. Luton's at a minus 24, you're at a minus 16. So if yeah. they beat you 6-0 again, they're right there. Yeah. <laughs> Which apparently you have the propensity to do. Yeah, yeah clearly. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Done it once, it'll happen again. I'm not going to be sure. the only one sad today. Oh, I'm, okay? d- d- I'm dragging your bitch ass right down with me. I... I, I See, the difference is, is I'm used to disappointing performances, so I'm just kind of meh to it, right? Where you, it's like this has crushed your entire world, and you probably lost the league, and you're fucking hating yourself probably for it. Probably not. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, not a good week for Liverpool at fucking all, no. and both of them, including the uh, the European one, both at Anfield. Uh, That's bad. First time since 2021 they've lost consecutive games at Anfield. Ooh. In any capacity. I know these these two games were in, in uh, separate competitions. In any capacity, they have not lost consecutive games at Anfield for three years. So the match was really frantic, right, despite the scoreline. Mm-hmm. But it there was a couple of opportunities, but it felt like Liverpool was just disjointed. Yeah, so they've gained more points from losing positions than any other club in the league this season. Uh, I think twenty-seven was that number. Uh, that also, I heard the scored said. the most goals in uh, the second e- half in or something. Extra time, or, or extra time yeah, after yeah. the ninety minutes than um, any other team. Like you're expecting them to somehow figure it out, and they just never did. An injury time, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're well. So you saw it in the game against United. Kwanzaa's back pass to Bruno 
in that second half that allowed him to shoot from inside a center circle and mm-hmm. score. You saw the Liverpool players deflate. We spoke about it last week. That's mm-hmm. how it went. Right? Do you think it was that bad that it absolutely fucking wrecked everyone? I mean, it might have, <laughs> honestly. I mean, I hate to put that on the young lad, but Jesus Christ, it's been a bad week. It really bad. I mean, me. and Jurgen Klopp, that there was no excuses. And if you looked at the post press uh, uh, conference for the post match press conference uh, to the loss at Atlanta, the three no, he was like, I didn't even know my team could play this bad. Yeah, like he's, I'm just perplexed. Like he wasn't. There was no excuse. There was no bullshit. There was no nothing. He was like. I didn't even know we had this in our locker. Yeah. I mean, no Ad- idea. Atalanta flat out whooped them. Oh, yeah. Now, they, their they also didn't play in a no, we're not a Europa League show, mm. but this, in context, this is important. They didn't play their worst 11 ever. They didn't like sub out everybody, but they didn't definitely didn't play their strongest 11. Right. Thinking they could probably win. And by the time <clears> the <throat> other guys came on, Mohamed Salah's first two touches were shots on goal. Right. But he's just not hitting at the moment. No. And so many players were injured, you know, or missing a piece here or there. Now everybody's fit. Mersobislai was out for, what, three months. Mm-hmm. You had or two months or something. You had um, Endo was out for a few games. You had McAllister at one point was out for a few games. So all of these various changes and stuff, This that actual starting 11 hasn't played together properly for about four months. Uh, the other thing. And it looked like they had just met. If you had told me that this game – like if I woke up from a coma mm-hmm. and you were like, this game was August 31st, second game of the season, I'd be like, yeah, fair enough. A lot of new players there. They don't yeah. know each other yet. Makes sense. But it's not. Right. It's in April. Yeah. And they've been playing together since August. Yeah. That's a problem. Here, Here's thing for you. Both keepers end up making kind of worldies and not really realizing that they made worldies. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> so did fucking Emmy Martinez. Yeah, I, I accidentally world class because a lot of them. There was the one off the line that that uh, Henderson got that I don't even think he three. Yeah, I and think he had. Well, and then there was a bunch off the line from the defense from Palace, uh-huh. and then there was the chance that, for Mateta to make it two nil and, and Andy Robertson. It, oh no, that was, was the, on purpose. Though. Well, there was the Andy Robertson one, but then there was also the one with Allison where he was, was completely falling away and just just flung an like, arm up yeah, yeah, yeah. flung an arm up and knocked it away you're like Jesus I, it, again for the score line this match was frantic I don't not to say that it was good because it was not a good no, match no, no, no. but it was it had fucking good, it had good moments it had good moments but overall it was not a good match but uh I don't know if you remember John Stones's clearance off the line where you know that that ball was just barely mm-hmm. still had touch yep. in the line there. Um, Andy Robertson's was just as fucking good. Yeah. That run back. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's as a defender, like in my life, just like, see, I got a huge boner from that and I don't like them. Yeah. And I was like, that's fucking, <laughs> but that's, that's the shit you live great. for as a defender. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what, fuck that's yeah. what you live for that's right there. That's fucking awesome. Now, the, <clears throat> for Liverpool, do we, think that they're going to have an answer or or are they starting to really fade? I think they're starting to fade. I think the the Klopp announcement came at an odd time. We said it at the time. Yeah. As soon as things started to not go their way, I think you saw them starting to get worse and worse and worse. Oh, now now the pressure is definitely on because you're like, you know, uh-huh. we can't win FA Cup. We got now we have to somehow put four past Atalanta without them scoring. Right. You know, and, and in Italy, that's going to be hard to do, man. I mean, it's not impossible. Liverpool have goals in the team, but right. it's, it's, uh, it's well. A, it's and a how tall many t- order. how many times have we seen them do that? They did that against uh, Barcelona, well, famously. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's fair. Uh, they they, they and that was a better Barcelona kind of side than this Atalanta side. Yeah, very true. And uh, the one thing I will say, and you're right by saying, if this was the second week of the season, you'd believe it more. But old Kristen Bulls got one of these in him a year. It's yeah. either against Liverpool or against City. They have one of these a year. They yeah, figure they, out a way once a year to pull this shit shite. off. They've been such shite over no. the last two months. They, there was like no wins in five or seven or something. Yeah, I, I can't remember I what they said. W- once they got the new coach in, I think there's been a little bit more success to the team. Well, they looked better, but they yeah. still lost games. They did get one win in that time with him. They did get one because they got one right after uh, they drew Everton. Yeah, I'm saying yeah. in their last five or seven, yeah, whatever the stat was, because yeah, yeah. he came in 
probably what nine games ago. Yeah, roughly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no wins in five or seven games. I just mm-hmm. didn't see it after. <clears throat> As we've seen it from Liverpool, same way we've seen it from City. Whenever they have a setback, there's usually a massive response and somebody going to get a hurt, a real and bad. And there wasn't and one. And I was sold on it. I was talking to, to the business about it. And we were talking about what we were betting this weekend. And I was like, man, I'm putting fucking money on the over three and a half in Liverpool. Yeah. Like, solid, solid a score, over three and a half. Like, they're going to have this. Like, yeah. Because they have to have that response from Thursday. Right. And I truly believe that was coming. And they just, again, looked like they hadn't met before. Yeah. It looked like their first or second game together ever. And I've never seen anything like that. Because normally, <laughs> over the history of Klopp's career there, we've gotten a response from those setbacks, right? Right, of course. And we just didn't. Especially mm. at home. That yeah. was the other thing. That's if what's they so were baffling. At, yeah, at if they were field. at Palace, it's uh, okay, maybe there's a sliver of an argument for that. Right. But at home? <sighs> Back to back, stale performances. It's That's weird, really man. tough. All you had to do was win, and you're back at the top of the table. And honestly, you look great in the first half. The only thing that happened in the first half is you didn't score any goals. But that's it. That was Emmy made a couple of really big saves, but you guys were far and away the better team. And if you listen to like the Robbies at halftime, they're like, "Oh yeah, Arsenal's going to find mm-hmm. a goal." Arsenal looks great. The They're looking great. At halftime, I put $10 on a correct score, Arsenal 2-0. Mm-hmm. At halftime. At halftime, I looked at Sam and said, I don't want to do a halftime update because Arsenal's going to come back and murder us. I was too fucking nervous. Yeah, I was like, I'm not doing it. There's no way. There's, because Arsenal's going to come out of that locker room pissed off. A team like Villa. And Villa came out of the locker room. A, a team like Villa that are very good, but mm-hmm. there's so much narrative there, right? With, oh, yeah. Emery's with, got your number. With Emery, Emery's got your with, number, too. With, it was the first time he's won in the Emirates in his last five games. That includes his time as Arsenal right. manager. Well, but... Second time we beat you this year, though. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The narrative of Unai Emery mm-hmm. against, obviously, his former team, us. And yeah. then you've got the, the all the speculation with us wanting to buy Dav- uh, uh, Douglas Louise, yeah. rather. Um, and then him being suspended, mm-hmm. and then you add in all the Emmy Martinez shit, mm-hmm. and it just you know the, it, the two the two chances the one of Saka's three things should have come off. Yeah, right. number one because they have over the last six eight weeks, um, more often than not. Yeah, uh, and they were just a, a sliver <laughs> sliver wide. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Jesus header was a big one where he it was. I think he saw it late, but it was a pretty much a free header, and he put it just wide down to the left yeah. um, on the far side. And then the Trossard chance. Hmm. You take two out of the three of those. You're 2-0 up at halftime at home. You're, places, walking, you're walking to the second Places half. jumping. You're walking to the end of the game. But I, you let a team like Villa, who's good enough, you let them stay in it, they're mm-hmm. going to figure you the fuck out. And they did, because the second half, we had nothing. He ended up subbing off Odegaard, subbing off Saka, to protect them for the midweek. Yeah. And then we lost all impetus on top of not really having any impetus in the second half anyway. I was a little surprised when they brought on Leon Bailey and you guys pulled Ben White but mm-hmm. kept Zinchenko oh, on. Fucking- I was like... Why didn't you guys go a little and it wasn't more even his It wasn't even his fault. Yeah, but it just I mean, felt you... like that. That felt like a, a fatal mistake. But yeah. you know who was on the far stick when that happened? <laughs> when Liam Bailey mm. had his chance, was Declan fucking right. Yeah. He was the one that I guess should have been marking him uh, yeah. via that initial corner because Bailey's he was the closest one year. to him. And then next thing you know, it's Bailey. A, it's a good finish. In, in, in post 80th minute, fucking back to back goals like that. Mm-hmm. Boom. Well, Bailey so Watkins. I think that the second one, because the last person back was Emil Smith Rowe, uh-huh. I think we went straight panic mode. When, oh, Bailey, when, oh, yeah. when Bailey's going in, we just went push forward, fuck it. Yeah. Gotta Why get is Emil Smith Rowe the last person back? Yeah, he's, that he's makes an no sense. attacking midfielder right. or our winger. So I, I heard another point from, from some, uh, another show that I listened to, and it makes total sense, obviously, in, in retrospect. There's been so much <laughs> stoppage time in the Premier League this season. You almost kind of have to pretend that that goal was scored in the 75th minute and you actually have 15 minutes left. Yeah, you Not have to think that way. Minute. You really do have to think right. that way. Because normally because there's there, at there least... there was seven, eight minutes of stoppage time in this game. at least five minutes. Right. Like, on a, sl- on a slow game where everything goes correctly, 
there's five minutes right. typically left. In so a there match. was no reason to just bomb forward like that and leave everybody so exposed because it was what about fifty two seconds or something between goals, something like that. It wasn't long. Yeah. So there's absolutely no reason why everybody should be beyond midfield. Uh, all you right. Know what I mean? Shore so, Billy wants to know uh, why you change Havitz positions when he's been so damn hot. Be, try going after the game. Yeah. To get more attackers onto the field because he has the ability to play midfield. Oh shit! I gotta fix something. Um, and uh, Mr. Graham, what uh, poison do you want? Pick your poison here, uh, stud. Barrel age, please. Barrel age is what we're gonna go with. Yep. Okay. Oh, it fell. oh no, it fell. Not good. Here we are trying to do uh, funny up. production stuff. Yes, that's right. We got uh, some uh, merch from uh, good old Jepson's Malort there, Mr. Graham. Nice. Yeah. So uh, there you go, little. Uh, Malort flag there for you for uh, for the rest of the show as she uh, has to pin it up to the wall because it's not clipping. Very good. Uh, Mel, Just would you me. like would you like the uh, honors? Malort, will you? Uh, Mel, would you like the honors? Oh, no, go ahead. Okay. Uh, look at that, Graham. There you go. Sorry, a little barrel age for you. <laughs> so do you want to know why I'm mad at Villa even more so than just this game? Why is that? Is because I'm looking here, right? Mm -hmm. You have a, a three to the positive goal differential over Tottenham, right? As of now, mm -hmm. that's after your two no win, and I guess Tottenham have a game in hand, so uh, I'm less mad at you. Yeah, but their games uh, against uh, Chelsea, I believe, is their game in hand. So you all knew Tottenham going into this game were already four nil down. You've already gotten your hundred million off City. Why'd you have to hand him another title, man? You could have just ate it for us and still finished in fourth. I because have a conspiracy theory that maybe Villa and City are in it together. Tottenham, more so than we thought. Tottenham still have to play Liverpool, City, and us, and you have a much easier go of it the rest of the season. Dude, I was getting uh, thank yous from Liverpool fans. <laughs> for what? Finishing in third isn't going to do anything for them. Yeah, it's going to be... And and that's the uh, final thing before you take your shot on the Lord there, Sam. Uh, City now find themselves in the driver's seat, and they don't typically relinquish when they get now, it. They there, tend not to let it go. There there are some tricky games um, for them. Brighton away, and the Brighton have a ton of injuries to yeah. players that could be important, like Evan Ferguson or uh, Hiro Matoma. Mm -hmm. um, so that's less of a concern. Obviously, us going there and rolling them three 0 was like much more of a surprise than than not really yeah so city should have an easier go of that yeah to be to be completely fair the the game and it sucks to say this out loud but the game's got to be set of traveling to spurs yeah they still in the league have yet to score a goal at the tottenham hospital stadium in the league I, right. they did it in the fa cup but in the league they have not yet and you gotta hope with spurs chasing fourth place they'll have something to play for even though it would help us, getting a draw would be much more, or, or a win would be much more important for them. Right now, that being said, we still have our own trip to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Right, we still have a trip to Old Trafford. Yeah, so we still have tricky games. You have you have your two biggest rivals, very much looking forward to ruining your day. Yeah, in their building, exactly. So, so it is now, tough. Both of those games, honestly, I ain't fucking worried about them. Yeah. Wasn't worried about him before this weekend. Not worried about him after this weekend. Right. Because we are better than both of those teams. Right. Um, I think we got the jitters. I think we suffered from a situation where going last this weekend and, and having that pressure. Mm -hmm. I think if this game is at 1230 on Saturday, it's a very different story. Okay. Um, because we're still also quite young. I mean, that's another piece of it. We are quite young. If you go through the entire squad, how many trophies are there? <clears throat> really? Really? Chelsea, uh, Chelsea's old players and Havertz and 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 uh, Jorginho, yeah, and then Declan Rice with a random, you know, fucking European McRib. trophy that didn't exist but yeah. two years the ago. The McRib, call I, it by its Christian I'm, name. It's right. the McRib I'm sorry. Cup. It's the the McDonald's McRib Cup. And other than that, we don't have any trophies in the team. Like right. so, where, where, you know, these are the things that build winners. These disappointments and that growing hunger inside to fucking do better and not let this happen. <laughs> And to, to get this experience, you have to be in the positions, and we're in the position. So am I throwing the towel in yet? No. Am I disappointed? Am I, like, 
not super optimistic, yes. All right. Well, then it's do that shot. But so here we go. Uh, Sharp Belly says that he was listening to a Jordy podcast and delusionally did the math. And, Jordy. And guess who's got a minuscule shot at stealing fourth and a smash and grab? Not, not happening. It. Not happening. <laughs> Just be happy with finishing above United. Okay? I will punch a horse if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Graham. <clears throat> Bella Fox. Yeah. The battle for Europe is heating up as every spot for the McRib, Europa, and the final Champions League spot is still in the balance. Nuke, I know. I, Champions League. I was messing up the word <laughs> as I was saying it. I just saw you went bougie all of a sudden. <laughs> no, I was just swallowing spit while I was saying it, if you really need to know. This is like one time, like what you just did right there. This is like one time my wife pronounced January January, and I right. was like, "Where are you from?" Let me say the fucking scores: Newcastle four, <laughs> Tottenham nil, Bournemouth two, Man United two, Fulham two, West Ham nil. Utter and complete domination for Newcastle over Spurs again. The only consolation for Spurs is that it didn't take as long to get the first goal this time. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, but no, I was going to congratulate Newcastle, and then I remembered they have fans like Alan Giannis, uh, Shore Billy, and fucking Tyrell. So, yeah. meh. Meh. <laughs> they, God, they just kicked the shit out they of them, man. They did. It and really he, did. He, honestly, for real, Izak was fucking just, last few weeks especially, just been on fucking fire, man. There, I, I, I'm... Gordon has as well. I'm really enjoying, it feels like... The goal scoring race is much more engulfed than it has been in a while. Yeah. Like you think about, you know, there for a little while it was just Kane and Salah back and forth, and Mane maybe mm -hmm. a little bit out of there. And then last year was just undisputed, right? It was just such a big gap. Yep. And you look now, and it's like you've got, you've got Holland, you got Isaac, you, Isaac, you got, um, you got uh, Cole Palmer now is right in the fucking thick of it. Cole You've Palmer's got... leading it, I think. Solanke is right in the fucking thick of it. He he's got another close, one this one, too. Well, yeah. I think he's on 19 this season. You know, it just, it's really fun to kind of see that there's a ton of different goal scorers, and it's not like it's all coming from one team. It's, it's very divvied out, and it's all up and down the table, too, which is kind of fun to watch. Oh, that's uh, disappointing. I uh, almost had it. Okay. No I problem. almost fucking had it. I did a search for the thing. Um, I want this one. Here we go. This is what I wanted. I'm sorry. Why does this? Why did this do this? It had the right thing pulled up, and then it fucked off. All right. Anyways, massive, massive blow for Tottenham. This was. It's a hell of a note for uh, for Villa when they move up the table without even playing a fucking game. Like, yeah, no shit. Um, I mean, that absolutely true. It, it, that's how bad it was for Spurs, though. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, that's what keeps happening, and it's it's weird that they turn in some of these performances, especially like Mickey Vanderven and some of the others. So it was Erling Holland and Cole Palmer were tied on twenty each now, and you have Isaac at either nineteen or eighteen. I got it right here. Yeah, so I you searched got Erling and, Holland on twenty, Cole Palmer on twenty, Ali Watkins on nineteen. Mo Salah and uh, Isaac on 17, well, Solanke on 17, and then down at 7th, it's uh, it's uh, Inspiration for the Children and Gerard Bowen at, um, Jared Bowen, I'm sorry, at 15 each. Yeah. Hell of a note. Oh, look at this. Just outside of the uh, top, uh, just outside of the top 10, 10, uh, 10 Sam, in uh, 11th. Probably could soccer old, or something. Could old, no, no, no. He's in uh, ninth with 14. Come uh, on. That's what I'm talking about. Good old eyes close together, giant forehead, Chris Wood. <laughs> Sitting on 11. How Come about on. that? Get in, son. Get yourself a kiwi and make sure you eat the skin. This is, for Newcastle, though, this is the charge you need, right? With with all the injuries and all the setbacks this year, getting back to Europe is fucking, oh, it's it's fucking paramount for them. Well, especially because they need money, right? Um, until those rules are changed, mm -hmm. they do need the funds, right? 
Hey, because oh. the Piff Posse can't just put in anything they want. Well, the Piff Posse, what they need to do is have a separate group and maybe buy a couple of hotels from uh, from Newcastle that they can then just, you know, put back to themselves and give them money. Like, I don't know. Todd Bowley did this fucking week for fucking Chelsea, flat out stating that it was to level things out for PSR. Nice. Like, admitted to it. Just went, yeah, that's what I did. I bought a couple of hotels with my old company so that uh, Chelsea could have some more money so we'd be okay with PSR. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's, that's how we roll. Sounds like it's another missed opportunity for Mushiri. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Todd that's Bowley. Cute. You think we own hotels? <laughs> I don't think he owns a pot to piss in. No, not at all right now. <laughs> and it sounded like 777 doesn't have a pot to piss <laughs> in either, nice. apparently. What, um, what, I, what I would say about this uh, with, with us it, pertaining to Spurs, if you're getting beat so badly and so comprehensively that Christian Romero is telling to call, telling his team and everyone else around him to calm down and relax, you've got a fucking problem. That there. is not a that good is, sign. That is the absolute epitome of the time to panic, and uh, <laughs> probably need to grab a fire extinguisher. Yeah, uh, the cherries absolutely dominated the match against United. United was just opportune. That was, was it, really it. It wasn't even close. Um, Cherries were the better team. It was, so, it was not even debatable they were the better team. So I don't know if you saw my notes on this. We're, we're uh, simpatico here, sir, because I said it's the manner of the goals is what tells the tale between the two teams here for me. Mm -hmm. Despite it being a draw. Um, oh, so Lenk, the, off the steal, Solenke running the, uh, the young defender one way, then the other way, and then just slotting it home with ease. I mean. But United, what I'm saying is United's goals were more of a lack of effort more of a lack of wanting to take responsibility, more of a lack of discipline, of all sorts of things. Bournemouths were them trying too hard. Yeah. The kind of natural reaction, just throw your arm out for the penalty, obviously. Right. And then at least two of the swipes at that ball and the goal mouth scramble shouldn't have had mm. a kind of penalty well, spot and how, scramble. And then also somehow that ball kind of went up in the air yeah. Uh, on the first goal, and Bruno flicked it up to himself perfectly. Like, I it just kind of seemed lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard somebody describe that as it, it looked like everybody was, it was like a kid's game for a second, and then Bruno was the adult sweeping up, which being the most petulant child in the league, I thought was a funny comparison. <laughs> that is a very funny uh, when comparison. I, when I heard that this morning. Um, but it just, Bournemouth looked more together, looked more comprehensive, looked more assured, looked more a team. Yeah. Than United still, and they got a new manager yeah. this year. Yeah, and United have had the same one for two and a half, almost three a, years. A new manager, and they started terribly this year. Oh yeah, they were dead last and um, looked horrible to start the year. For sure, I also believe that uh, Bournemouth should have had a penalty. Yeah, I don't disagree. Minute. I don't disagree. There is continuation in football. Yeah. I think Number I don't one. think that was outside the box. I think that was inside the box. I think the defender, as I said, he was his foot was on the line with the foul. That that That's, means he's, he's in, the in the box. So there's the two pieces, right? Yeah. There, I think his foot was on the line as well. Um, now, when the foul initiated, the offensive player, I think it was Christie, mm -hmm. was not in the box yet, but the defender was mm -hmm. right. Also, um. There is continuation of football. Yep. And contact was still happening into the box. Christie was still on his feet into the box. Yep. I think that should have been a penalty. I think that's a scared referee that doesn't want to put his cojones on the line. Yeah. Is I, what I think. I don't disagree. Well, I'm sorry. VAR. Yeah. Because the referee actually blew for the penalty. I initially this goes back to what I told you last week that there's zero and there's never anything clear and definitive about VAR. And if the whole thing is supposed to be a clear and obvious reversal. If in your match against Newcastle on three separate occasions, they couldn't find anything that was clear and obvious to overturn the, mm -hmm. the call on the field. How do you look at that? That is called a penalty and say, there is something so blatantly clear and obvious that it's outside the box. It was not clear and obvious. No, you but have to go with the call on the field at that. But point. again, much like in the NBA, there is continuation. There was still yeah. contact. He'd still not hit the ground yet. Right. I mean, and, well, I'm, and no, I'm, agree say, I'm agreeing with you with that. No, yeah. no, and as you say, his foot was in the box. I mean, right. that it's a blatant fucking penalty. Right. You can't say, oh, that was clearly outside the box. It clearly needs to be a free kick and not a penalty when the call was penalty. Why are you shaking here's, your head? Here's the biggest thing. Who said what? 
You're oh. shaking your head. That's something something juicy. Well, I'll share you like uh I mean, you really want to be honest with you or do you want me to like make something up? Are they no. just making fun of me? No. It wasn't about this that we're talking about right now. No. Then uh, keep it rolling. It. She remember, they they they're a fucking sewing circle those three. They yeah, just start fair. chatting with one another, and she's amused by it. Her so sewing circle. You know what? Brilliant. It's it's her new it's her new fucking it's her new fucking farm it game. Okay, is watching them type. I like it when we can see producer Mel in the little window, and you can see her react to the shit we write. See, there you go. See, I told you it was all about her. Yeah, yeah Graham. Fuck from, off, from now on. It's not all about you. It's all about fucking producer knowledge. No it would shit. do you good to know that. Just having fun with her new toy of seeing the chats. There is a good chance, Mister Graham. A very good chance. United might not be in Europe next week, next year. Uh, yeah, there absolutely could be, and it would be the first time uh, since uh, us uh, a couple years ago, and then another first time since Chelsea last year, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is more recent. So Fulham, Fulham, Fulham is impossible to figure out. I know. <laughs> like, I just, know. They it's are so all over the place right now. Um, you're comfortably safe. Isn't this when you're normally supposed to kind of fuck it off? Yeah, right? Right. Like, they're just so, so weird right this now. Is, when Antonio skied that chance on three and a half minutes or so from mm-hmm. the penalty spot that he, so far this season, when he's been fit, is buried. Yeah. Um, you kind of thought, I thought at least, this this just isn't going to be West Ham's day, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just going to be one of those days. Especially because about three minutes later, Andreas Pereira from a similar position did not fucking sky No, he did he not. Scored. Uh, West Ham really did fuck all the rest of the game, honestly. There was a chance here or there. Leonard, yeah. I think, made two saves total. Yeah. Um, it was really all Fulham. Comfortable 2-0, you know? They had, I, I want to say they had 10 shots on target. Yeah, yeah. They they, they, they completely outplayed them. And, was, they, and now here's the thing, you know, West Ham. I think they because, wasted this performance to not beat Liverpool at Craven Cottage. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> so <laughs> now that you have, you know, West Ham now finds themselves on the outside looking in because of what Newcastle has done. But they ain't that far behind United. And United, like you mentioned, United's still got to play you. Yeah. Like, that ain't easy. Uh-uh. Like Even they, at home, it's not easy. Yeah. I mean, they still got some tough matches left, and they're not convincing at all. So it could be West Ham and Newcastle, and United find themselves in eighth place. And both in the Champions League and in all the European competitions – Villa's well ahead in the McRib, right? But West Ham and Liverpool are both in the hole. And you and City are both on draws, but going to their buildings, and it's no small feat. You got to go to Bayern. They have to go to fucking Madrid, right? Like, eighth place might not get that extra spot because I'm not so sure any English teams other than maybe uh, Villa is winning a fucking European Cup this year. It's, it's looking at where they are now in the quarters. It's not looking good for any of them, I would say. Right. Yeah, no, I'm completely with you. <clears throat> I'm completely with you. It's it's and, and they're so inconsistent at that. Yeah. If they can't find any consistency here soon, then they very well could find themselves in, in one of those positions mm-hmm. because West Ham against Leverkusen, I don't think that you can – Come back from that. Well, I mean, they're well, 40... let's also face it. Everybody's rooting for Leverkusen now because well, of course. They're, they're on a fucking, uh, they're undefeated. They're well, going for a fucking listen, perfect so we'll, season. Uh, this, my closing is statements. We'll, we'll, we'll get on to it. But I'm just saying on the back of, you're absolutely right, 43 games unbeaten to start the season mm-hmm. in all competitions, mind you. Yeah. Is the, I was a little confused when I first read the stat. I had to reread the line because it said in all competitions. I was like, Arsenal went 49 a whole fucking season. Yeah. So when it, we had the best start to two seasons. Right. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Fuck you. <clears throat> In all competitions, this is the most a team has never not lost. Yeah. Ever. Insane. Yeah. Fucking insane. Pretty crazy. Um, Absolutely insane. So I don't think West Ham's coming back, uh, even at the London Stadium, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. Um, n- not that I blame them. Like, Smokey was pissed off about how they played. I'm like, <clears throat> how are you ever going to play? Right. I mean... In their building. This is the first like, time in 11 years Byron didn't win the Bundesliga title or some shit. Yeah. You know, yeah, whatever it was. You just so go like, in there and try to hang on. What did you think you were going to do? Right. Right. You you I face said, this the is, wrong team. This is one thing you can't be mad at. And this is what happens <laughs> when you get to the business end of, of, of competitions, right? Is you run into teams that are also fucking good. Yeah. A lot of times better than you. 
Yeah. And it's how you deal with it. Now, two nil, can they overcome it? Yeah. Will they? No. <laughs> Fuck no, they won't. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's it's going to be a very interesting run in for those Champions League uh, and uh, Europa League spots back and forth. Rounding out the rest of the league, and oh, so that happened. Brentford 2, Sheffield 0, Burnley 1, Brighton 1, Forest 2, Wolverhampton 2, Chelsea 6, Everton 0. Ugly fucking match, but the bees figure out a way to win. That was not a fun watch. Uh, the best part of the entire game was that Ali Air Blaster uh, had an own goal, and he's got the best name in the Premier League. <laughs> That's, I mean, really not much to talk about. A 2-0 away loss from Sheffield United. I can't really be asked anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's that part of the season where I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. I, for... Brentford played fine. And and for me, for, <laughs> for Sheffield, I want them relegated as soon as humanly possible because I eventually play them in our building mm-hmm. and I need them to not care. Well, I need them to not fucking care anymore. You want them not relegated, but you want them because they still have to play. Oh, no, I think maybe you might be the only one. We're the second to last game that we play them in. So yeah. by then, I want them relegated. I want them not to care. Yeah. That's that's what I really, because we're going we're gonna to probably need that game. Down the stretch, we are going to fo- probably need that game. I think they will care no matter what <clears throat> for that particular game because – Besides us, you are the longest active streak in the top flight right. in Europe. Bring them, bring us down with them. Kind and of what attitude. they can say is they will remember us forever as the infamous. Right? They're, right. they're, they're the guy that shot the president. You they're, know what I mean? Very fair. You very feel fair. me? I think that's a dangerous spot to be in if they're already down for you. Yeah. That particular day. Uh, Burnley just unable to get out of their own way, man. They get the one nothing lead and then. Fuck it off, dude! Both of the both of these teams fucked it off. Uh, I they I'll get to, to, I'll get to my thought mistakes. on on uh, Brighton in just a moment, but, but both goals were mistakes. They yeah. were both and pitiful mistakes. Yeah, I mean, Estupion with the the fucking little dinky pass back uh, with his front two studs mm-hmm. instead of a proper pass um, allowed. Uh, uh, what's his name? I can't even uh, Brownhill. Yeah, allowed Brownhill to close the goalkeeper down because it was a terrible back pass. And then you had the the stupid Murich. Mm-hmm. What are you doing with his two studs that uh, apparently were holograms? Because I'm not sure how that ball got past him. He was fucking looking <laughs> at it. He. It's funny because there's there was rumblings for Trafford to be sat because he was making too many mistakes as a young keeper, and then you have this fucking happen. And also, Murich, and what made it kind of apparent was how goofy his recovery was after he fucked up. But he may be the longest man in the league <laughs> since Peter Crouch. <laughs> just like lanky fucking long shit. It like It just looked funny. like Slender Man running after something. It was fucking ridiculous. Uh, real quick on the Seagulls. Honestly, the Seagulls just look fucking tired, dude. Yeah, they just it, look fucking well, tired. Well, like I said, they've always had a policy of rotation and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And like another guy you've never heard of. I think they made the well is dried up. Yeah. <laughs> and where's, you know, I know they're injured, but, but Ferguson and Matoma are huge misses. Yeah. I mean, it's both probably- of them. probably. It's probably a good thing that they're both hurt right now because they likely won't get sold in the summer. Yeah, I mean, that's um, true. Because they're probably losing to Zerby. Because if they don't lose to Zerby to, to Liverpool, they're going to lose them to somebody. Yeah, could be. And if the, they don't get Manchester into United. Europe, <laughs> and they don't get into Europe, which they're probably not getting into Europe. But like, the, the, two, the two of them especially have so many goal contributions between them for that first part of the, the first half of the season yeah. that I really feel like that's what they're missing. Yeah, agreed. I really is there something behind me? No, your uh, flag's starting to fall, and uh, I just noticed that it's the uh, sticker that that holds it up is falling off. It's okay, Mel. It just it's don't just just don't touch it's it. Definitely at a malort angle. Yeah. yeah, it's just hanging on by a. I've thread. never covered up either one of your crests, and you lost six 0 Where's your fucking malort coverage? Because <laughs> it's her doing it to you. I had nothing to do with that. That was a hundred percent producer Mel, sir. She just asked me her for the fucking won, flag. Penis. She asked me for the fucking flag, and I gave it to her. I permanently have Malort. But it's never, covering, it's never covering your crest. Yeah. When you talk about your game, we'll just hold that in front of your camera. Yeah, go I'm right just not even going to talk. Go right ahead. Um, Forrest and Wolverhampton. You know what? Of all the matches that went 
this was probably one of the most entertaining ones. It was this Helter was a Skelter's fun fuck. fucking game. It was Helter Skelter's fuck. Amazing this game. what happens when Mateus Cunha is healthy, huh? I know, he right? He scores fucking goals. Well, that's what I said on uh, on our friend Paul's podcast yeah. that uh, part of the reason we were late is I was doing the. Uh, they do an opposition preview, obviously, mm-hmm. of their yep. upcoming week. And the whole Ars- lot of Wolves. Arsenal play Wolves this weekend, so they asked me to be on. And um, it, I, I've said it to you over the years. It, it, it Usually with Chelsea, uh, there's a couple of teams that it feels like it happens against frequently mm-hmm. where, oh, wow, everybody just magically is healthy for Arsenal. Right. Uh, Cunha, full game under his belt, two goals. Yeah. Perfect warm-up for us. <laughs> yeah, great Can't warm-up wait. for you. Yeah. Like, fucking great. Can't fucking wait. And that is going to be reflected in my bet, by the way. I was going to say, watch Wang be on the fucking bench next week. It's He's just ready like, to go. What? Why? Why? Everybody else got to face everyone super depleted, but we can't. Yeah. Yeah. You know Precisely. what I mean? It's just like, what the fuck? But, uh, but yeah, no. Wol- Wolves and Forest were both good in certain stretches and both really bad at the same time. Yeah. Um, there was some football from both sides that I haven't really seen that poorly yeah that poorly um but at the same token they both produce these kind of moments that were great and lucky at the same time and awesome and fun i think that's twofold i think in the case of wolves it's just the fact that they have so many fucking people hurt that there's just mistakes in their game right now yeah it could be. but on the case of forest i think they're so fucking nervous right now that they're prone to make mistakes because they're trying to, you know, stay, you know, stay in it. And, yeah. and they just are making major gaffes at times. Now, Morton Gibbs White, uh, or Morton Gibbs White, rather, um, playing like a, a man possessed. Uh, oh, absolutely. Against, uh, against his former club. Came up, spent nine years at Wolves, by the yep, way. Yep, yep. Uh, against uh, his former team. Uh, most of that being youth time, but did make over 60 appearances for the first team. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, scored, ran over to his fans, said, give me a second, turned to the Wolves fans and went, can't fucking hear yet. <laughs> oh, man. Just like normally you get a subdued reaction for your former yeah. club, especially the one you came up at. Think mm-hmm. of like Arsenal and Cardiff have no rivalry i think it was an fa cup match or it might have actually been in the premier league and carter might have already been relegated actually and aaron ramsey scored but that's where he came up he kind of just went like hold my hands up thank you yeah i scored to the home fan or to the uh to the traveling arsenal support and then walked away right okay fine no problem more gives up was like fuck that fuck you bitch Uh, (laughs) it just went hard i loved it well, Wayne Rooney didn't do that when he scored for Manchester United against Everton. Right. He gloated right in front of the Gladys <laughs> yeah. Street. And then what did Sir Alex do? Sub his ass right off yeah. immediately. Uh, Nuno Espirito Santo did not do that. No. Uh, actually, you know, confirming his new name, Nuno Espirito Diablo. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> the opposite uh, of St. Mel, the devil. Cole Palmer dismantled Everton early. I mean, it wasn't even in question by the by the 29th minute. The match was fucking over. Bro. Everton showed nothing. Bro. So I wrote the sentence. I just can't really believe what I just saw, honestly. That's the first thing. The only stat I wrote down here is Cole Palmer himself. Cole Palmer. Mm, that's hard to say. Cole Palmer himself mm-hmm. had five times the shots on target Everton did. Yeah. <laughs> And he scored four of them. <laughs> he had five shots on target, scored a perfect hat trick inside 30 <sighs> minutes. Uh, fucking Jesus. I mean, it's no Scandinavian oh, hat trick. But... I think you got the Scandinavian hat trick. Oh, we, we absolutely did. He is taking did. a shit in your mouth right now. Yeah, dirty, dirty, dirty Mike and the boys did a number on, uh, on the car there, man. <laughs> That's for damn sure. It was bad, dude. Oh, my God. It was absolutely god-awful. It and was I, god-awful. I, I totally get you. Like losing one nil or you know two nil, but you had the whole play in the first half. Like I'm pissed off, but I've been on you know on the end of a four nil or eight two. Perfect yeah. example, eight two against Manchester United. Yeah, Wayne Rooney had the dive. There's all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. By the end of it, I was just like, you know what, fuck it. Like this is just going to be one of those days. Yeah, doesn't matter. You know, it was just kind of one of 
I, I understand your point as much as I want to give you shit for it. I completely understand your point where the, it's just like, you game, know what? The game was over by halftime. It's we, finished. We need yeah. to fucking forget about it. It's the next three are at home. Now, granted, one of those is a Merseyside Derby, mm-hmm. right? But it's, we've got, we've got Forrest next. That is fucking monster, especially considering now that goal differential is gone. Yep. We're level on goals on goal differential with them. Still ahead of Luton, but level with goals on them. And then it's the Merseyside Derby, and then it's Brentford. And then it's at Luton, home to Sheffield, and then you guys. It's 1,000% in our hands. Yep. So we have to fucking win games. That's what it comes down to. Yep. We didn't win today. We look like absolute dog shit. I mean, I don't think I've... Other than the time, the very first full match I watched of Everton was with you, Everton Arsenal, and you kicked the ever loving shit out of us. I think it was a seven to one loss. Fucking dismantled us, right? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen us look that bad in a match ever. What what ever makes, what makes me really nervous is you have veterans like Ashley Young, Tarkovsky, you know, on the field. You have Dwight McNeil, who's been in the league a fair few years despite him being <laughs> relatively young yeah. 26 or 28 or whatever it is you've got jack harrison who's seen a, a fair few things but you know was in the league for two seasons uh, now three seasons you know before he came over from uh mls uh back to to manchester city and then sold on you've got um you know onana who's been there a couple of years you've like people know the fucking league you've got dcl who's, who's yeah. been in the league well dcl was out today but from injury right so you've got decore yeah. who's been in the league and, and performed well you've got all these players and sean dice has made his reputation on being organized on being um hard to beat on being you know difficult to break down and, and all sorts of shit and you looked honestly so bad that I'd be very fucking concerned, man. I it because just, if if he can't get and Tarkovsky yeah. like especially played with him for most of that time, I, I will. Like, if there is the if on? there is the slightest silver lining, and this is me just trying to put on blue go- colored glasses and find something in it. The second half, a lot of cynical fucking tackles, a couple of yellow cards. At least the boys were just like, "Fuck you, I'm gonna hit you." That was only like, four. At least, but at least there was that. At least there was that. At least there was some kind of fuck you you know yeah. and and on the goal that uh the 18 year old scored uh, which is funny because we're watching and mel's like why is he celebrating the way his 18 year old first goal for chelsea she's like oh okay that makes i think sense. it might have been his debut yeah it was his debut <laughs> yeah. yeah and and <laughs> the academy know, product as well like just been, call been there since training was, wheels just been there since yeah, he no was like shit. nine or something yeah oh do you want to line with that yeah well i've hey. had yeah had enough of these that's for damn sure <laughs> I it's it was just so fucking bad. There's really nothing you can say. Like, and don't look now. Chelsea are not that far off of Europe either. They're only three points back, and they got a game in hand, so yeah. they're not completely out of it. They could backdoor their way in. I don't uh, think they will. I think they're either. just so fucking inconsistent. I think they'll probably fuck it off this weekend against City, or they'll beat City in the FA Cup semis. And then fuck it off in their midway in their midday game, yeah. midweek game. I mean, for sure. Uh, it's just, <sighs> I we have this propensity for putting ourselves right into these kind of problems. I just have to hope that over the next, you know, like the last two seasons, we figure out a way to fucking bail ourselves out. Yeah. While you take your shot, I do have a little another little piece of silver lining for you. Um, it makes sense that an academy product of Chelsea, one that scored his first goal and vigorously celebrated the sixth goal uh, in a 6 0 defeat, uh, was a skinhead. <laughs> By choice. Not saying anything. Just saying. Sure, money. Um, dirty. I lost again. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I can't. What are you at now? I don't care. Minus 1847. Last season, I didn't win a single bet. This season, I started hot and have been on a big stinker ever since. Yeah, well, and I'm yeah. fucking over it. Yeah. You going to do some sensible betting? No. <laughs> of course I got right. worse. Of course. That's what I we got figured. worse, and I'll tell you about it afterwards. Uh, but for now, my cup of loo- losers, I've already said it once when I took my shot of Malort, says, well, full of fucks. <laughs> yep. 
Villa does, in <laughs> fact, do fun. indeed. So let's go to you, sir. Alrighty, uh, the seagulls fucked me, so I am now down four hundred and eighteen dollars. Big Sam's luck of the week, Mr. Graham. Did you know that twenty four point two four two four two four two four percent of the time? It works 100% of the time there, big boy. 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24. Jesus fucking The Christ. numbers don't lie. I have I have the facts right here. Public Lots school of documents. education, they might be off. Uh, <laughs> seriously, Seagulls, you tied Burnley is what I had for that. You know, I mean, wheel, he's beat them. Chelsea tied Burnley last week. Mm. What happened, Sam? You beat Burnley. Yeah, I don't know. Downtown, walking fast. I'm a seagull. Go fuck yourself. All right, this week I'm taking a uh, two-game parlay. I'm taking Arsenal and Villa beating Wolves and Bournemouth for plus one forty. Nice. Okay, right. well yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> Plus 140, just yeah. trying to stay up there. Just trying to stay up there. You know what? I'm going to be ahead of you, and that's all that matters. And now. It's time for our degenerate gambling friend, Pat's Pick of the Week. And it's titled Two Game Parlay Winning Time. <laughs> oh, he's back! <laughs> he's back, baby! So, didn't hit on my bet last week, but I'm not a quitter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it going before the end of the season. I'm down 1400 <clears throat> Excuse me. And this week, I'm making a two game parlay Liverpool over Fulham. And Villa over Bournemouth. <laughs> that pays on a $100 bet at $200. Nothing crazy. Just hoping Villa doesn't have a letdown match after their big win Sunday. Uh, you guys have a good week, and I'll talk to you next Monday. Very kiss good. So that's his. It is the kiss of death. Oh, what do you and, got going on there, stuff? Uh, what I've got going on is something that's definitely going to happen. Nine-way parlay. <laughs> no, actually, it's a lot less than normal. Get it the fuck together, Sam. I there tried to hit that button five times. It didn't work. That's the reason why there was a big pause. I would have gotten the next two sentences out and wouldn't have coughed if you found it properly. Uh, so like I said, I'm down 1847. So I'm not only going to erase my debt, but go up Grammy $1,100. folding. But go up $1,100 at the end of it because this, what I'm about to tell you, will get me plus $2,956 mm -hmm. $2, on a $100 bet. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Looting or a draw with Brentford at home. Okay, Luton's at home. Mm -hmm. Brentford still don't look particularly good. Right. Luton have been playing well, so I think Luton or draw is a good shout. Burnley to beat Sheffield away. Burnley have looked better than Sheffield in recent times, especially away from home. I think back to the 2-2 against Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Forest or draw with Everton. Okay. Now, this is me putting the needle in a bit. Uh -huh. They looked better in their game than you did in your game, obviously. <laughs> so it might have been a little bit of recency bias. <laughs> Not good gambling. But I think Forrest might do something at Goodison Park. And then Arsenal to win. Okay. You ready to, Ready for this? Mm -hmm. Arsenal to win against Wolves. Both teams to score, but there be under four and a half goals still. Okay. So you're thinking like a two to two, one. Two, one, three, three one. one. Arsenal win. Okay. <clears throat> so all of that. So that's an Arsenal three, three way. Luton or draws four. Burnley to beat Sheffield is five and four. It's only six. That's fine. Uh, plus two nine five six. Like I said, so uh, I I'm throwing caution to the wind. Fuck it, uh, and I'm I'm going hard here. Bless your cotton dick. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, there you go. That's you. That's yep. you throwing the old needle onto me. I appreciate that. I will uh, very much enjoy watching your bet fail because, you know, you, I'll be go the ahead, part of your bet it. that fails. Go, okay. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Not going to win. Yeah. Going to win. Going to win. <laughs> or draw. If you draw, that's good for you. And I, I still no, win. We're going to win. We're going to win. Okay. Going to be an ugly one nothing. Should have bet that then yeah. if you're that confident. Uh, no, I'm bet <laughs> I'm not that confident. <laughs> I, bet, I bet guaranteed winners that never hit each week. <laughs> but you know who has uh, normal winners all the time and is going to finish better than both of us? The fucking chicken. Kitty missed with the bees, and so she sits at 17 and 14. So this week, I gave Kitty Villa hosting Bournemouth. Now, she showed me a screenshot of the midweek McBride Cup of William and his son, George. 
But wasn't William schooling his son on why Villa fucks? It was Kitty. Holy shit, Kitty telling telling the boy about uh, about how Villa fucks. Well, wouldn't you know it, Kitty is definitely picking Villa to beat the cherries. There you go. You like that? <laughs> you, like, you like that too? Hold on, hold on. If Villa, if if I don't, I'm not Kitty's looking teaching into it. about the birds and the bees. Wouldn't it be Villa to pop the cherries? <laughs> could, could you know? Could be. You know, if somebody was a better writer, we could have got more laughs. Uh, no, Kitty doesn't pair <laughs> Ghostwriter a lot. Here's here's what I do know. Uh, that a uh, King William, future King William, would uh, certainly agree to is always gamble legally and responsibly. Very good. All I right. lost the plot halfway through that. That's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't ready for where that one was going, was she? I'm just more concerned about my chicken having sex talk with a royal. third in line, <laughs> yeah. talking in line to the throne. Talking about talking about Villa. That's what she was talking about. Like, Villa fucks. I mean, Villa That's what they do. Fuck. Villa you know? fucked in France. And you also could Villa have fucked in Anfield. I'll tell you something. You could have wrote a Brentford Villa parlay. Mm-hmm. Talked about the bees and then the popping of the cherry. Yeah, very but, true. Uh, sure, Billy. Villa fucks Arsenal season. <laughs> Oh, too soon, Shore Belly. That was one sign too much. Can't hear you from down there. <laughs> Mr. Graham, any somebody, part? Somebody uh, in this duo here, Shore Billy, is going to be in the Champions League next season. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Graham, any part in words? Yeah, so there's two. Um, I'll start with something sad, and then we'll go to... Uh, no, there's three. Uh, two things happy. Um, the sad one, I do want to mention and send well wishes uh, to the very young West Ham player who was knocked out by Emerson's hip. Mm -hmm. uh, that was very bad. Uh, his, I did forget to bring that up in the second segment. Yeah, his name is George uh, Earthy, uh, is his name. He was running back towards um, the ball uh, from a relatively offensive position. Emerson was coming up from the back. The ball was around the mm -hmm. center circle. He, uh, Emerson jumped. There's a couple Fulham players involved as well. Uh, Emerson jumped, chested the ball kind of forward, past them both. His hip ended up colliding with the head of Earthy. Mm -hmm. He goes down in a heap, just like straight away. Yo, back, yeah, like, like flat. Superman flat. flat. And then about 15, uh, not, probably not 15 like seconds. Like five it's, seconds. It felt later. like 15 seconds. His arms just shot up in the air, like all. Goofy. Like, like where when you see that you're like, oh fuck! Did somebody just break their fucking neck? Yeah, brain went haywire. It was scary. A 19 year old kid making his debut. Yeah, um, oh. very fucking scary. They tended to him quickly. Emerson himself noticed it, ran away from the ball that he collected, and was just like, stop, stop! Just like waving yeah. his hands, like trying to help um, and get him attention. It was. It was really freaky. I just walked up from the basement as the, the highlights were on for that mm -hmm. game. Right. Uh, it was actually halftime in our game, Mel. And I kept the TV on upstairs in case the baby cried so I didn't have to miss any of the game as I went to get the baby from mm -hmm. her nap, right? Smart. Always thinking ahead. Yeah, always thinking. And, um, and the highlights were on, and I just stopped for a second to look as I was refreshing my cocktail. And, uh, yeah. Weird how you said that. All right. Hella zesty. <laughs> Should I say it like him? Cocktail. 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 Uh, <laughs> the Champions League. <laughs> Keep it fucking going, now, killer. And, Come on. Uh, no, but I, I saw I saw it kind of hat. I saw his arm shoot up, and I was like, "Oh fuck, what's that?" And I, I yeah. had like I rewound it and watched it again, and I called you immediately. We just got oh, on yeah. the phone. Yep. And I called you immediately back. I was like, "Bro, you got to see this. This is nuts." Um. So you know, he's he's fine. There hasn't really been an update that I've seen yet other than definite concussion. Um, so we're just... He's been released. Yeah. He's been released from yeah, hospital, yeah. so that that's good. Um, but, yeah, so I just wanted to bring that up. And, you know, on your debut, young kid, I just wanted to make mention to to make sure that, you know, we, we send our, 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 you know, kind of get get well soon. Because mm -hmm. um, that's course. not something you want to see. Um, one very brief uh, funny thing I saw was a meme that uh, I surprisingly didn't get shared in our group. Uh, but uh, footy accumulators on Twitter uh, said, who's the most overrated player in the Premier League? And uh, the first response was, it has to be Sterling. He's no better than Nathan Redmond, nowhere near the uh, worth the cash that we paid for him. They responded with, he's been good at spells, though, mate, hasn't he? And then uh, 
<laughs> the uh, somebody else responded to that comment and said, "So was Harry Potter. Doesn't make him a decent fucking winger." <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought oh, was very funny. Too funny, and that should have been brought to the table. And yeah. I'm very disappointed in the rest of you that didn't do it. Um, <laughs> Bruce Day is not happy at all. Uh, but the uh, the big one, obviously, we are not a European show at all, but it is fucking historic, and we have to mention it because mm -hmm. there has been 120 years of Byron Leverkusen's existence, and they have won one uh, DFL poca uh, DFB Pokal, excuse me, the German Cup. Um, they uh, they won that in 1992, 1993, and they won the UEFA Cup in 1987-1988. Those are the only two major trophies in their history. They were the bridesmaids uh, in the Bundesliga one, two, three, four, five times. Um, and then also in the Pokal three times. Uh, but they are on for a treble. Mm -hmm. Not the treble. Right. The treble includes the Champions League. Right, of course. Uh, which a lot of people are saying the and it's pissing me off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm a nitpicking cunt. Uh, but they have won in 120 years. They have not won their own domestic league, and they wrapped it up with five games to go against traditionally the most dominant domestic side besides Celtic or Rangers in the history of club football. Yeah, no and, shit. Uh, uh, did it with five games to go. So fucking well done to them. Xavi Alonso took this team over in the middle of last season, and they were second from bottom fighting relegation. Taylor Thompson says, I don't share memes, I make them. <laughs> By the way, I like that your arsenal, the force within arsenal is strong because your crest has willed the Malort flag off of it. Yeah. We're fucking everywhere. It's now right? half on, half off. <laughs> kind of like my pants. Um, but I'm <laughs> I'm really happy for them. I mean, that's fucking crazy. And obviously, uh, one of their most influential players this season leads a lot of uh, interesting metrics, uh, including touches on the football in the Bundesliga hmm. uh, this year is Granite Xhaka. And well done to him. Uh, obviously, I know that's going to create a stigma, much like uh, Tottenham players leaving them to go win trophies elsewhere. But not even they can do that anymore since Harry Kane left uh, and joined a shoe-in and didn't do it and then figured uh, out a, he figured out a way to fuck it off and not win <laughs> and also and i'll say it again and i'll shout it from the mountaintops figured out a ways going to finish top score and get himself a cannon trophy yeah yep <laughs> love and, it love and, everything about that and uh one of the silver linings for you as a club is hopefully you will be knocking him out of another tournament this mid this week yeah well i'm less <laughs> hopeful about that, to be honest, after the weekend result, um, it's going to be difficult. But we have won with a worse team in Germany 3-0 before. Yeah. It was just that season we lost 4-0 at our place. <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. That was back when uh, Thomas Rusicki was there, the little Mozart. All right, everybody. Next up is uh, injury time, where we're going to preview the uh, weekend's action. We're also going to talk a little bit about our fantasy teams and uh, – a bunch of silly shit happened with uh, with the Scottish Premier League. Would that shock you to hear? No. And, of course, we're going to do the EFL show live next. And a lot of shit happened in the championship, League One, and League Two. So a lot of fun stuff to talk about there, too. Um, do you want a quick little nugget preview of something fun? Uh, as long as it's not killing the lead. No. Okay, please. Is the lead milk? No. There's a milk story in League One. I love it. Fantastic. And of course, should somebody want to find injury time, Sam, how do they go about doing it? It's patreon.com forward slash DU football show to sign up to that one $5 tier. Get all of our extra content. If you want more of our beautiful faces or charming wit, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Tell a friend, tell a colleague. Probably don't tell your kids, though. No, definitely not. Until yeah. next week. weird over there. Yeah. Until <laughs> next week, everybody. <laughs> Guten Nacht. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Punch you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Right day, yay, the fucking Gooner Graham. Snow the Malort, the straight and short. Sam Graham, hey. Sam Graham. Don't 
Get the fucking new button.